scallops. Scallops. Scallops are popular. What are these? They're whiting fillet. Difficult choice with this. Very thin. Yep. It's going to be hard to keep moist if you overcook them. Yes. Yep. I won't overcook them. Mm. Uh, good luck <laughs> to you. Yeah. Aaron, you, you, you work like a mess, yeah? No, I'm just in a rush. I'm getting all my stuff on, all tidied up, and then I'll start cooking. You've got under an hour, so you need to push it along, mate. OK, James, first course? First course is going to be a glazed fig with uh, oyster sauce right. and onion glaze. First and what's that in the sink? It's paper bark, mate. I made a You found it? Car. I found it, but don't you worry. Sh show me. What? What? Show me. I've got here some bush, uh, bush rice. And you found that on the side of the road as well? well? Yeah. Well, in my second audition, I cooked fishy paper bark and they didn't like it. I needed to redo that dish so they could see that I could cook it properly. Josh, 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 Josh. Hey, You've got boys. lots of stuff here. Tell yeah. us what you're cooking. First course is just going to be a salt and pepper squid. Uh, fresh lily go squid. So for your second course, what are you doing? Uh, I've got some gold band fillet. Yep, let's have a look at that. Your father's in the seafood business, right? So this is your uh, this is your forte, should be. It should be. So if I can't cook this, boys, well, I think it's I'll be back. Disaster, packing. isn't it? Right. Excellent. Good luck, Josh. It doesn't take an hour to taste something, yeah? <laughs> right? But you guys can taste, <laughs> form, go. When Gary and George came around, I added too much pepper, my carrot puree. Well, I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to do it quickly again. The clock is ticking. Yeah, yeah, no. 29 minutes. minutes. I was watching the clock and I knew exactly how much time I needed to plate up, so I was just, it was just working with the clock, and I think that's something that everybody's going to need to work with quite closely is keeping one eye on the clock and the other one on the knife. It's such tension, the, the panic and the mayhem and then cooking for people that I don't know. I just was running out of time because I was so rushed. I didn't know whether or not it was cooked enough. Now, Julie, I'm it's a bit worried it's going to be a bit it's, domestic -y. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, supermarket stuff. That's my worry. That's my worry. OK, guys, you've got five minutes. You need to have your stuff together. I didn't want to actually cook the fish until the very last minute. And then the nervousness started to come in because I was waiting and then I'm thinking maybe I'm leaving this a bit too late, maybe I should start doing it now. OK, guys, you've got one minute and 30 seconds. If you're not plating up your dishes now, you need to be thinking about it, that it has to look its best. Make sure your food really belongs to you. Under that pressure, you just can't be sure what's going to happen. As it turned out, when I went to actually crack pepper over the top of the oysters, the entire sort of contents of the pepper meal fell onto the oysters. You've got 30 seconds to go. Come on, guys. Chop, chop. <clears throat> this is where it all counts, yeah? yeah. Ten. down if it's not on the plate it doesn't belong on there I really hope it's enough to get me through I will be gutted if I don't it's now time to find out who's going to go through to the next round of MasterChef Australia and who's about to go home two judges will be determining your fate today our first judge is the much feared restaurant critic Matt Preston last year I was voted the world's best food journalist what I'm looking for for Australia's first master chef, is someone who has knowledge of food, a great palate, fantastic technique, and some real substance to what their culinary dream is. And the second judge, Australia's top seafood chef, Greg Doyle, chef and owner at Pier Restaurant in Sydney. His restaurant has been voted best seafood restaurant in Australia more times than he cares to remember. A good seafood dish from a bad one, I think, is the quality of product and equal importance to that is the way it's cooked. It's now time to get down to business. Josh, you're up first. So I came in last and they did reverse order, so I was the first one up. So, so this dish is what? Uh, it's Noir squid. And then what's this dish? I've just done a panko and breadcrumb mix with the, with the gold band snapper. So we're expecting a lot, because you come from a seafood family, yeah? Yes, I do. Nice, clean, simple flavours, which doesn't overshadow the fish, but that squid's pretty tough, yeah. Thank you, Josh. 
this dish could send me home, so I'm quite nervous, actually. Probably the most nervous I've been. Next up is James. It's a glazed fig with an oyster gravy and yeah. a snapper done in paper bark with some uh, coriander. You cook that beautifully. Thank you very much. Really beautiful. I'm stressing about that. I haven't quite picked up the, the paper bark flavour yep. I think that you would have yep. wanted to pick up. For me, that dish doesn't really work. There's not a great deal of balance there. I don't really understand the dish. Aaron, you're up next. It was fairly daunting in the sense that here's a guy who hands out the chef hats and here's a guy who has them. As long as I don't bag it or say it was absolutely rubbish, I'm in with the chance. So, Aaron, you want a three-hat restaurant, don't you? I do. Tell me what, what you've done. What I'd put in an entree course is the pan-seared scallop with your carrot puree. There's good basic flavours going on in there. OK, thanks. I put my plates down, took a step back and looked at their faces and thought, oh, no. That's pan-seared scallops with mango salsa. That's pan-fried whiting with a cucumber salad. If these come out in a cafe, I'll be very happy. They look fantastic, they look very fresh. Lovely combination. Any reason why you only, you, you only seem to see the scallops on one side? Or... Oh, I, I didn't, I just... <laughs> yeah, you should yeah. try and have a little bit more intense heat. That's got nice, basic, simple flavours. Very nice bistro style. Thank you. Tell me what you've done. Seared scallops, the cauliflower puree. The use of that crunch of the bacon works really well with the softness of the scallop and the, the puree. Yellowtail kingfish bruschetta with a squid ceviche. Well done. Well done. Well done. That's great. Really good. Really good. It's flathead. It's got a Thai style salsa on top with unripe mango. And the flavours are good, but it just. Spaghetti marinara in a chili garlic sauce. I find it a tad too oily. Blue mana crab uh, in black pepper. A lot of big flavours in that dish, yeah? It's not, not a very attractive dish, yeah? It doesn't, no, it doesn't leap as like something you're going to want to eat. I know you put the lemon around the outside, but it doesn't camouflage enough for me, I'm sorry. We have a lightly seared tuna with an Asian noodle salad. Is this a dish you make at home with different ingredients? Similar. Well, what ingredients would be different? I would have used soba noodles. Those noodles aren't working. The rest of the dish is fine, but that noodle, those noodles aren't working. Thank you, Michelle. Tom, what are the dishes? Northern New South Wales oysters. Sashimi grade tuna, crusted with pepper. Now, tell look. me, look, um, look let's, let's get straight in here. I don't know if... if the, you've got huge great peppercorns in there. They would have been ground. Um, well, yeah, but would have been, would have been, should have been. Why do you, when you just take them off? I didn't have time to actually take them out. So the problem is now, all I can taste is that pepper from that dish. The fish is nice, but again, you know. OK, Tom, thank you. <laughs> the judges have now deliberated, and of course, five of you will have to go home today. The judges will now tell you of their decision. The quality of what's been cooked has been pretty outstanding today. The sad thing is, for some people, the experience ends here. Can the following three contestants please step forward? James. Elvira. And Kirk. And I'm sorry to say, the first three to be eliminated today are you three. Can you please say goodbyes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I've met some really lovely people, so I'll take that away from you.
loved it, met some top people, top experience. It's been awesome just being around so many people that are foodie. Right, well, let's continue with this ugly process of elimination. Could Julie please step forward? You put that plate down for it to be judged. You're putting your heart on the line. Julie, Greg's got something to say to you. We felt you were the standout chef today. Your dishes. Well presented, well cooked, lovely flavours, well done. Please take a step forward, Chris. You're through. Please step forward, Brent. You're through to the next round. Poke, you step forward. There's enough there for you to go through to the next round. You know, you're thinking in the back of your head, you count the numbers down, I mean, there's four people left, 50-50 chance, it's quite tormenting. Please step forward, Aaron. We've all agreed on this. You're through, mate. We said at the beginning of the day that five would go, three have gone, three are left. That means two of you have to go home. It's a hard call, yeah? Because I think you all know that you didn't do the best you could have done. But there's a thing about this competition, and that everyone here is going to make mistakes. You'll all make mistakes. Today, you three have made your mistakes. So when we come to deciding which one of you is going to go home, we're not going to send one of you home. We're not going to send two of you home. We're not going to send any of you home. You're all in. Ah!